I'm now going to talk about teaching and not cheating about innovation. Let us not be a university of cheating. Let us be a university of teaching. There are people who think PhD could easily mean perhaps he has no degree or Bengine Hana degree if we do not teach well then we can produce people who may not function out there that is exactly what i am trying to imply and that's why i'm saying let's teach not cheat about innovation in matters entrepreneurship for example so I'm saying, innovation is perhaps the most important aspect of entrepreneurship. Indeed, Schumpeter's theory of development assigns paramount role to the entrepreneur and the innovations introduced by the same entrepreneur in the process of development. However, there is still some debate on understanding what innovation actually means. I want to believe that innovation is the coming up with and implementation of new ideas that add value. Let me break down that definition coming up with and implementing new ideas that add value. The definition has three aspects, three aspects, all of which must be satisfied for any initiative, whether business or any other, to be considered innovative. That is my take. So now, which are the three initiatives or the three aspects? The first aspect is new. The second aspect is implementable. It should be done. It should be ability to be done, to be implemented, to be executed. And three, must add value. That is when innovation comes in. So what am I saying? that the absence of any of the three aspects removes innovation. If there is no new, there is no value addition, and it's not implementable, then it's not innovation. Let's look at the aspect number one, the aspect of new. The initiative or idea must be fresh in the context where it is being introduced. But wait a minute. New doesn't mean no one has ever done it before. We are talking of in the context in which it's being introduced. Let me give an example. Self-service is commonplace in hotels, in restaurants, so it's not a new phenomenon, Kim. However, if we introduce self-service in the transport sector so that people pick their own, passengers pick their own tickets, pay for and pick their own pick, uh, tickets, then that is an innovation in the transport sector. But it's not an innovation in the service or in the restaurant because it's already existed. Indeed, I experienced 
self-ticketing when I was doing my schooling in the Soviet Union those days. You know, passengers enter through the back door of the, the bus, pick their own ticket, go and sit, and there are no contactors. Now, if that can be brought in a new context and a new geographical position like in Kenya, then that will be an innovation. Second aspect, implementation. Innovation is in the doing. Innovation is not just in the thinking or conceptualizing. So let's not teach our students just to think and conceptualize innov innovation. Then we shall graduate people who do not execute. One is said to have innovated only one, only when one has successfully implemented, has successfully executed a solution so that it actually is in use and having an impact. So when you are testing our students on innovation and we just give them a written exam, the thinking, the conceptualizing, no, that's not innovation. So simply having an idea in the head, in the cognitive domain, without executing, does not make an innovation. It is very unfortunate that in many universities in Africa, and I've been there, entrepreneurship is taught theoretically with written exams which draw from the cognitive domain of learning given to students who pass and therefore that PhD, Penkine Hana degree, perhaps he has no degree, but they have passed with flying colors because of just written exams, thinking, conceptualizing, but not implementing. The aspect number three, value addition. A new idea, which was aspect number one, implemented, which is aspect number two, without a clear purpose, such as solving a problem, or meeting a need, or satisfying a want, cannot qualify to be innovative. There has to be a clear gap that what is created aims to fill. Think about the Kenyan public university lecture chairs. Most of them are fixated. They look just like the rest and are designed for the right-handed student. To innovate and thus differentiate, one may have to come up with an adjustable chair that solves the problem of the left-handed student. Indeed, watch my students who have innovated a chair at that YouTube, and you'll get to know uh, what I'm talking about. And now, for what innovation is not. I'm saying all three aspects, new, implemented, and value addition, have to be satisfied for anything to be considered innovative. If only two of the three aspects are met, it still falls short of being an innovation. And hence, entrepreneurship will not have been achieved. Let's look at it. The aspect of new under the aspect of implementable, something new and being implemented, what we get is novelty. The intersection of new, you bring something new and it's doable, it's done, it's like, that is novelty. And I'm saying, done plus new minus value add addition is novelty. It may be cool, but for what purpose? Are we just going to bring up cool things for no purpose? Then that's not innovation. That's not entrepreneurship. 
I want to say that I once sat in an innovative project presentation by engineering students at my university, Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology. And some students presented new and doable projects. But when I asked for their purpose, the general answer was to fulfill the requirements to graduate. That was the purpose. The projects were novel, but added no value in the Kenyan economic development context. So they left those in the presentation rooms. One, one example was an ACA alarm system that was not better than what was already existing. So they produced a alarm system, but I couldn't buy it because it's not better than what I have. So there was no value added. And that therefore could have been an invention, but no innovation. So we are saying, there's another aspect, new and value addition. Now when you just have new, something new that adds value, yes, then we have a creative idea. But we are saying, new plus value added minus being able to be executed, to be done, is simply a creative idea. Of course, here we see some seed for innovation, but still has to be implemented before it counts. At the same presentation that I've mentioned, some students had very good, but an implementable project. There was this multi-purpose ox drawn plow, which the students purportedly said they had designed it for the Western Kenya farmers. However, in that Western Kenya, Kakamega, for example, Bungoma, land subdivision has rendered plots of land very small. Yet that ox drawn plow required a minimum, it's my purpose, it can plow, it can harvest, it can, it required a minimum of four oxen to pull. Yet land subdivision has made it impossible to keep even two oxen on a farm. So the farmers looked at it and said, yes, good, but I can't implement it. It's not compatible with the situation. So what we are saying, the Webster, for example, dictionary says that creativity is the ability to make new things or think of new ideas. But practical creativity is the ability to discover solutions that will solve problems. Therefore, not every creative idea may qualify to be innovative. Indeed, innovation is not necessarily equal to creativity. Creativity is coming up with a big idea, but innovation is executing that idea. So in the case of the ox drawn plow, it was there, the students graduated, they have, but they could not implement it. Then there is the aspect of done, implementable, and value addition. That is when we now get improvement. If there is value addition and it can be executed, can be done, then we have improvement. So value addition plus implementability but minus new is improvement. We are improving on an existing one. Yes, stepwise tweaks and improvements are good but they have a danger of leaving, opening up for disruption. For example, improvement for the sake of it without addressing the customer may easily lead to disruptive innovations and be resisted. You come and tweak an improvement on one a culture, 
is not accepted, and therefore improved, but not accepted because it's not compatible with the situation. So innovation is not necessarily equal to improvement. Minor tweaks, minor improvements of an existing process is not the same thing as innovating. Innovation means doing things in a new and a different way. And therefore, not all improvements are innovations. But all innovations ideally should lead to improvement of output. Thin line. But we must identify that thin line and teach it to our students. So in summary, I'm saying the three aspects, new, implementability of being able to be done, and the value addition. Those are the cornerstones. Those are the pillars of innovation. When we have just new and being done, new and doable, it is novelty. When we have a new that adds value, it's a creative idea. And when we have implementable that adds value is an improvement. But finally, the three mingle together, meet together, and that is when innovation comes. So innovation is coming up with something new that is doable, that can be implemented, and that adds value. That those three aspects are important for innovation. Not just anything new for the sake of new, not just improving for the sake of improving, not just creative idea for the creative idea. And therefore, I now look back at Kenya's educational system, 844. Yes, it was new in 1985. It was introduced in 1985. Yes, it was done, been implemented, but it didn't have value. No value addition, and therefore it was removed, or it has now been removed. We are facing it out, because it was actually not an innovation, therefore, much as it was new. Much as it was implemented, and we implemented it, but research insights showed that it added little value, perhaps even removed the value. Therefore, the 844 system, thought to be an innovation then, it was not an innovation. Let's see another example of innovation. That is M-Pesa. M-Pesa was new in the 2007. It is doable, it's being done, implementable. It continues to add value from just transmitting money where now improvements are bringing in banking, transaction remission. Indeed, now we even can remit uh, 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 capital or, 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 or money from abroad back to the country. Remission from the city to the rural areas. A lot of value. And therefore, this is an innovation because it qualifies three aspects. It was new when it was brought in for 2007. It was implementable it is implementable it is growing value it's adding value i am glad to say that i'm actually an mpesa agent and i can tell you without a blink of the eye that it is an innovation that has added value to our economy so let's teach not cheat about innovation. Let's not half teach. 
let's not have explained innovation. Let's not equate innovation to invention, innovation to creativity, innovation to improvement. Yes, in the ordinary way we can equate them, but in the entrepreneurship way, in an innovation must have those three. It must be something new, something that is, can be do, doable, can be implemented, and something that adds value. Something that solves a problem or the customer, not increasing problems for the customer. Thank you very much. I hope we shall now be teaching properly about innovations. I hope now we shall be graduating entrepreneurship students who can go and implement the ideas. I hope now we can cross cheating and leave teaching. And I hope now we can say PhD means doctor of philosophy in whichever area we are doing. And not perhaps he has no degree or pengine hana degree. Let us not produce these PhDs. Let us produce doctors of philosophy in their area of specialization. Well, we can also talk about masters and bachelors, but I chose this because I noticed that at PhD level, we need more identification of thin lines between aspects. Thin lines identifying creativity, improvement, what is the difference? Invention, innovation, what is the difference? Unless we identify those thin lines at that level of PhD, then we shall be doing injustice to our students of entrepreneurship at that level. Watch this space for more talks. Subscribe to my YouTube for you to get alerts of my new postings. Subscription is free. Subscribe.